Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to an important advanced lecture. Today we are studying the lasers for diabetic macular edema. Now, as we all know that in the present era, anti-wedges have actually replaced the laser treatment for the diabetic macular edema. However, before developing the anti-wedges for DME, the standard treatment for the clinically significant macular edema was actually macular laser photocoagulation since the early treatment of diabetic retinopathy study was published in 1985. So this was the main uh, study which actually told us the importance of the macular laser photocoagulation and its role in diabetic macular edema and till now this study is relevant and till now macular laser photocoagulation is relevant in the treatment of diabetic macular edema. So what uh, did this study that is the early treatment of diabetic retinopathy study tell us about the laser treatment of diabetic macular edema. Now according to the EDTRS the laser therapy for diabetic macular edema could be of two types. It could be either a focal laser therapy or it could be a grid laser for therapy for DME. So what is meant by focal laser? For that we should understand first what is meant by the term focal lesions. So the focal lesions according to the EDTRS, they actually include the microaneurysms, the intraretinal microvascular abnormalities also called the IRMA and the short capillary segments that show us focal fluorescent leakage. So it is also based on that diabetic macular edema classification which is based on FFA, okay, which classifies the DME into two types focal and diffuse based on the amount of leakage which is occurring on the fundus fluorescent angio. So how do we do these focal therapy for the focal lesions? The focal lesions which are actually located in about 500 to 300 micrometers from the center of macula are treated using this focal therapy. The size of the laser spot is kept about 50 to 100 micrometers and the duration is about 50 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds so this is very important to remember remember that uh, the number 50 over here okay so the size is 50 to 100 micrometers and the duration is 50 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds and the end point that means till what level are you going to apply the laser so the laser is applied till we observe whitening or darkening of the focal lesion so this is very important, the size, the duration and the end point till what, uh, till what level are we going to apply the laser. So in my previous video on the panretinal photocoagulation, which is highly advisable for you to visit before you jump on to this video, is uh, in that I already told you what is meant by the intensities of burn. So a light intensity burn means that the retinal blanching, the retinal blanching will be barely visible. In the mild intensity burns, there will be faint white retinal blanching. In moderate intensity, it will be dirty white. And in heavy intensity, it is dense white. So here we are, according to the EDTRS, we are actually aiming for something moderate to heavy intensity burns in which we get dyed, uh, dirty white uh, retinal blanching to dense white retinal blanching. This picture over here actually tells you the location where we have to give the focal therapy. So if this is the center of the macula that is a fovea and you draw a circle around it okay which is at a distance of about 500 micrometers from the center that is called the central part or the macula. So in this part you're not supposed to apply your laser. Okay, so if you have microaneurysms in this part or any leakages in this part, do not apply laser. The laser is applied if the lesions, that is the microaneurysms or any focal dilated segments which are leaking, are present from this 500 micrometers to this bigger circle which is located about 3000 micrometers from the center of the fovea. So this is very important that you know that you're not applying the laser within that 500 micrometer center from the uh, macula because if you uh, do apply the la uh, laser over here that will lead to central scotoma so that is very important so however if the vision is say less than 6 by 9 with persistent edema and the peripheral network is very good on FFA then the focal laser may be applied that means you might um, relax your limit from 500 micrometers to about 300 micro micrometers but still you will not go beyond 300 micrometers okay and here what you do is because you are entering a danger zone the spot size has to be reduced to about 50 microns don't 
exceed the spot size and the duration will also be about uh, 0 0.05 uh, seconds that is about 50 milliseconds so that's very important so the cutoff here is 500 micrometers don't go beyond that so how does this focal therapy for DME works? The principle is that when we are applying the laser, they are working by the method of photocoagulation. So all the leaking microaneurysms in the retina will get occluded by the process of vascular thrombosis. So whatever microaneurysm is there within that, a clot is going to be formed, uh, which is called thrombosis because of our laser application and that will obliterate that leaking microaneurysm. Along with that, even the retinal pigment epithelium which is present beneath the retina or the outer layer of the retina okay that will be damaged and when it damages then it will recover and on its way to recovery it will produce various kinds of cytokines and these cytokines will help in resorption of the fluid which is present in the diabetic macular edema so i have a video on the channel on diabetic macular edema which is available in the playlist on diabetic retinopathy okay yeah. Now, the second type of laser therapy for diabetic macular edema is the grid laser therapy. Now, the focal laser therapy was actually done for the focal lesions which were present in the retina. But the grid laser therapy will be done for the diffuse diabetic macular edema. So here you do not have just one single microaneurysm, but you actually have diffuse areas of capillary le uh, leakage along with diffuse areas of capillary loss seen on the fundus fluorescent angiography. So here now look at the spot size. The spot size will be 50 to 200 micrometers. So here we are uh, actually grid means that we are uh, actually using laser to put multiple spots of laser on the patient's retina in the form of a grid. So that is called grid laser therapy in contrast to the focal laser therapy where we were actually obliterating only one single microaneurysm with a focal spot of laser. Now, in grid laser therapy, the spot size is about 50 to 200 micrometers, okay? So, obviously, the size is 50 and you can increase the size up to 200 micrometers based on the amount of retinal thickening or the area of retinal thickening is present. So, if you have a greater area of retinal thickening, you will increase the spot size, okay? But make sure that you never cross 200 micrometers. Now, the duration here is also a little bit increased from 50 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds. And the uh, pigmentation that you obtain is a mild retinal pigmentation burn, okay? So, just a mild whitening. Not Do not aim for the dense white uh, or the intense type of retinal burn. So, we are aiming for a mild retinal burn, which is visible to us. The grid treatment is not to be placed within that 500 micrometer of the macular circle that I already told you. Moreover, you do not place any grid near 500 micrometers of the disc margin. So preserve the disc margin and 500 micrometer area around the disc margin and preserve your macula and 500 micrometer area around that macula. However, the papillomacular bundle which extends from the macula to the disc over that area you can actually instill your laser spots in the grid therapy now the question is that you are putting multiple uh, dots of laser onto the retina so what should be the distance between each spots the distance between each spots should be about two visible burn width apart okay so that means if you take one spot here and take one spot here the distance between these two spots should be such that you can fit in two more spots okay and the reason uh, why we do this is because the laser burns they tend to expand with time so if they expand with time what will happen they will merge together with each other and the patient will have greater visual problems later on okay so always make sure that the burns are placed at least two visible burn width apart now till where can you actually give this treatment suppose the the microanism or area of thickening is present here along the r gate so can you give it over here yes so the grid can be extended about two disc diameters that comes to about 300 micrometers from the center of macula we know that the size of a disc is about 1500 micrometers so approximately if this is the macula approximately two disc diameters on top or on the either side you can actually give the uh, grid laser so if you see over here this is that 500 micrometer circle and you are supposed to actually uh just a second you're supposed to 
prevent this area then prevent a 500 micrometer area around the disc do not give laser here do not give laser here here also you should not support you are not supposed to give laser however you can give laser from outside this 500 micrometer circle okay if the circle is located from the center 3000 micrometer so this outer circle is about 3000 micrometer from the center and if area if any area of retinal thickening is present within this circle avoid this 500 micrometer circle area and then give your grid laser in these areas so avoid this avoid the disc and its 500 micrometer area avoid the macula and its 500 micrometer area however give it around the macula 300 micrometers area you can uh, put your laser spot so that's very so this picture over here is showing you that this is the area of diffuse edema and fundus floris and angiography you can see the hard exudates hemorrhages and this is a thickening area mostly in this area you can see there's greater amount of um, thickening and exudation so since so, so grid laser was applied you can see the laser spot size is from 50 to 200 micrometers and the duration is 0 0.05 that is about 50 to 200 milliseconds duration in a grid pattern we have applied it now that was what the original early treatment of diabetic retinopathy trial okay that actually suggested us okay so ettrs actually suggested us however then we have another study which is called the drcr study and uh, that drcr study actually modified our original early treatment of diabetic retinopathy study especially specifically it modified the grid therapy so let us see what all modifications were actually given by this drcr so in the initial uh, direct or grid laser photocoagulation or what we were doing which were given by the edtrs okay what i want you to notice in this table is that is a change in the microorganism color with direct treatment so the change that was originally required for us to observe during the original edtrs was at least a mild white burn to a dense burn evident beneath all the microaneurysm however the drcr uh, net actually told us that or the modified grid actually told us that it is not required for us to have such a white or such a dense white or a mild white burn even a mild grayish white burn which is a very early burn should be enough for us to do the uh, macular laser photocoagulation so that is very important uh, point about the modified edtrs or the modified grid so if someone asks you what's the difference between the grid photocoagulation and the modified grid the difference is that the, not only the spot size is less only 50 microns but also the amount of retinal burn that we notice in modified uh, edtrs or what we achieve in modified edtrs is very less and it is only mild gray white burn so that is important remaining everything is almost similar it is just the uh, amount of burn that is actually less in modified edtrs so you might ask that is modified edtrs then uh, is it effective is it as effective as the original edtrs yes it is affected it has been shown that even a mild gray burn on, on a longer period of time will be actually uh, equally uh, beneficial as an uh, as the uh, dense white burn the only thing is that the complications will be much lesser when you're aiming for a mild gray white burn compared to the dense white or a white burn then uh, based on that pattern only there were other scientists who came up with the mild macular grade protocol so in the mild macular grade what they were, they were doing well they were actually putting even lighter however a diffuse kind of burns so they said that let us now put burns which are even lesser power or lesser intense than the burns uh, in original edtrs or in the modified edtrs but however what they did was they actually put these burns all throughout the macular area okay in that 500 to 3000 micrometer circle and however these were uh, distributed even in the unthickened area so it did not bother them whether the macula was thickened or unthickened they said that even the normal retina should be treated with these mild intensity burns and in these what was done was microandrisms were not directly photocoagulated so let me tell you that even in the grid treatment that we were doing in which we apply the grid so after grid treatment also if we were 
finding any microaneurysm, that microaneurysm was also focally treated within that grid treatment itself. However, in a mild macular grid, they were not treating the microaneurysms as well. They were treating everything together, the thickened and unthickened retina. And uh, um, however, this showed that the mild macular grid approach was not very beneficial over the modified EDTRS. So it was finally told that the EDTRS, uh, specifically the modified EDTRS was actually accepted everywhere. So uh, if I'm not sure, yeah. So in the mild macular grid photocoagulation technique, they use lighter and more diffuse nature of burns throughout the macula in thickened as well as the unthickened areas. Microandrons were not treated directly. Spot size and all this was not so uh, properly mentioned and uh, the laser was applied to the entire area. Okay, so your 500 circle to 3000 microns superiorly nasally everywhere it was applied and the problem was that it was not very beneficial compared to the modified EDTRS. The modified EDTRS is the accepted one. Next is in this picture you can see this is a leaking vessel. Here's a microanism with a leakage, focal leak shown on FFA. So this is where you're going to give your focal therapy. And this picture is showing there's ischemic area. You can see there is no staining up and there are multiple leaks. Leaks here, leaks here, leaks here. So for these you can go for a, a grid laser therapy now after the laser therapy the question is how do you actually follow up this uh, these patients now the important thing that you should know is that uh, the laser it takes about four month time to show its complete effect so uh, initially it's for the first follow-up you call the patient after a six week duration and during that time if you find some very obviously apparent treatable lesions that would have been missed during the initial treatment you will give the patient new treatment at that time however after that the follow-up will be four monthly visit and every four monthly visit you will check the patient for the visual equity either on the snellens or you will check them on the edtrs uh, scale or you can you have to check their oct and if you feel that there is some treatment which is needed if macular edema is persisting and it is involving the center of the macula that means there is definitely a presence of clinically significant macular edema and you need to treat them retreat them with laser but the, the importance is that wait for four months do not treat them within four months unless it's the first week first sixth week uh, follow-up in which obviously missed lesions will be treated Next is, what are the complications of macular laser?